Velvet, Incredible, and, and Rabbits. Rabbits. Oh, <laughs> you feel like I'm <laughs> It's whatever you want it to be. It's whatever you want it to be. It's a strange world. Welcome to our dystopian podcast. You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Like, who the hell are you talking? You talking to me? I'm no funny how. I mean, funny. I'm clown. I'm Peter Vink. We all go a little mad sometimes. Brandon does a step down in this time. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And the clock is running. This is Andy. Hello. And is that Stephen? And uh, there are vines growing on. Yeah. Our yeah. Moss grows on a rolling podcast. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a picture. We'll show you. But uh, we've, we, I, I've kind of jazzed up. We, we, we've changed the whole setup, really. Um, I mean, this is completely new, right? Yeah, you've got a mixer and everything now, and we've got... We've got to stay on the mics. Yeah, it's, just, uh, it's very impressive. I sound, I sound like a... An evening DJ. Yeah, let's let's put on some smooth jazz. <laughs> Miles Davis, followed with a little bit of Charlie Parker. Yeah. <laughs> In blue. In oh yeah, that's great. Bob. That's great. Man. Yeah, great album. Oh man. Ah, uh, so yeah. Talking of jazz and someone who did like jazz. <laughs> Bowie's gone. Bowie's gone. Yeah. So we thought we'd talk about some a few fallen heroes from January. And there's there's probably more fallen heroes than we actually realise until since we actually planned this episode. I've actually got theory. It's actually the reckoning. All the good people are going, and all the bad people are just staying. You'll, you'll start hearing horns being played and four horsemen running about. Yeah, well, I tell you what, you've got one heck of a gig going off in um, in, in the old um, mighty clouds up there. Yeah, they have a great gig in the sky. The great gig in the sky has just got its own DJ now. He's mm. got his own uh, commentator. Yeah. And, you know, Terry Wogan's passed. In yeah, his last Wogan's week, so. gone. It's bizarre. But, you know, this is going to happen, and I think um, th- it seems like this is the year where all our big names are just suddenly getting clocked by the cancer. And it's, yeah. uh, and it's like, that... like my dad said to me when I was six years old, mm-hmm. the only thing that you can depend on in this life, son, is that one day you will die. Six years old, I was huh? six years old when he told me that. And it was six years old when I actually saw American Werewolf in London, so... Way to go for six. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter's turned seven soon, so I have to put something really traumatic in <laughs> Yeah, she, you got, you got to distill something. You haven't told her anything about death? No, she, not really. Not really yeah. but she, she, knows, she knows about it. Yeah, but it's not really kind of... She hasn't made it personal yet. It's not a... No. This thing's going to get you. But there's time. <laughs> you'd like, you'd just do, wait till I get home tonight. You, you, put it in a second. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I'm going to put it, I'm going to show the deep web. Oh, no. Yeah, so this is death, this is suicide, and this is uh, child prostitution. Oh, this is accidental asphyxiation. We shouldn't, we shouldn't forget that. I mean, that sometimes it just... Well, sometimes it's an accident, yeah. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's an accident. Fell off a bridge, you know. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you're just masturbating with something tied around your throat, and next thing you know... Yeah, that's life. You come and go at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still got it. <laughs> right. You so. know what? We're, we're actually we actually should be a little bit more dark and morbid and and sad. But you know what? Screw it. I don't think David Bowie would want to be sad that he's passed. I think the way he passed was incredible. The, the lead up to his death. He seemed to be in complete control of of, yeah. it, of the last decisions that he was ever going to make as, as a. As I an honestly artist. think it's the, the cleverest thing that any artist has ever done, is to write an album, uh, essentially about his mortality and death. Yes. Part of it is saying goodbye to fans, family, and to do that, release the album and three days later die. die. Nobody can do that. No, 
And then if anyone ever does it again, it'll always be remembered as, well, but we did that. Yeah, Even I mean, up yeah. to the point of his death, he was still breaking new ground, doing stuff that no one has ever done. The only person who has ever done that, the only person I can think of that can come close was Andy Kaufman, who, yeah. in his in his own wisdom, predicted something that may or may not have happened. But that's yeah. another story. And Jesus. Yeah, Jesus sort may of. have, sort of, but, um, you yeah. um, know. So, David Bowie was, was a musician. He was an artist. He was an uh, entertainer. No, I wouldn't say entertainer. I'd say he was uh, he was the art. Yeah, he was entertaining. He was an exhibition. He was a fashion icon. Yes, actor. he was a he was a, an icon for for sexual orientation and the and the pushing forward of of um, of open rights. Yeah, I, think I he was, was a beacon for people who didn't feel they fit in anywhere. Exactly. Think, yeah. You know what? That's okay, and it's okay to be different because look, but we it was always on his terms. Yeah, that's true. He and he never stayed the same. He always changed. Like yeah. you know, he he broke new ground with Ziggy. Yeah, his yeah. His character yeah. Ziggy, but you do, I remember if you can watch it, it's the very last gig of the Ziggy Stardust. Is it? You released a DVD of it, and at the very end, he said, "Not only is it not only is it the last show of the tour, but it's the last show that we'll ever do." Thank you. And this is going to be the last time you'll ever see Ziggy Stardust. And then the band's like, it was the first, that's the first time the band knew about it. They're like, what? <laughs> I'm fired, what? And then he'd, then he'd come out, it'd be something completely different. And it became normal uh, thing. And it was not like Madonna, who, who kind of does it, and I say, oh, Madonna's changed her image again. David Bowie changed his image, and it was like, oh, this is... This is reinvention. It was already... It was, it, straight away, we kind of like clocked in. This is David Bowie. It's, he's doing something different, but it's, it's him. But again, Madonna... We're always reinventing herself. He's just doing what Bowie did. Yeah, but also, and she's yeah. cited Bowie as being her biggest idol anyway. She, yeah, exactly. She did that. She murdered Rebel Rebel when he died. She did, did it she? live, and it was awful. Yeah, yeah. But at uh, least you know she's still paying homage. She to, tried to the guy. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, love is every love is different. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and but um, you know, I, and I and I just really. Th- feel that he had such um an affinity with his fans more than just fans they were just they were a part of their lives absolutely like i'd say bowie's been one of my heroes since i was about 10 years old it hit me hard because he released black star it was on the friday it got released i think it got leaked and then he just sort of released it quickly or maybe he released it quickly because he knew he was he was about to you know die yeah, and I, remember I listened to it, and it's really like especially the title song "Black Star." It's so it's like really dark. I play it at work, and everyone's a bit scared of the song, apart from people who are actually into good music. Yeah, but um, got a good sound system at work, I'm sure. So it yeah, sounded yeah, yeah. great, and um, I just loved it. I thought this is really dark. He's gone back to his dark, creepy stuff again. This is brilliant. I love yeah. this, and yeah. um, and some of the lyrics didn't quite make sense. I was like, well, oh, Bowie, you know, was very. His lyrics can be very layered and interpreted yeah and, and then he died and then, and then you're like oh right that's what it was about the old made sense yeah, yeah. it was um, same with lazarus and, uh, well lazarus pretty much wow yeah i watched that video and i kind of i just i just felt yeah i just felt like it was just completely uh, yeah it, it's, it's like being at an open open casket yeah and then he yeah, was just it's... completely bearing his his ill soul yeah before dying, and that that must have been shot pretty recent. Yeah, apparently been... when they were shooting it, he had to keep going away for breaks and stuff. Yeah, uh, he yeah. never complained. Apparently, he was always very like, I'm, you know, it's a, I just need a bit of a rest. I'm not, I'm just not very well. Yeah, no one quite knew what was wrong with him. God, I mean, it's just that. Yeah. But that in the the Lazarus video where he just goes into the cupboard at the yes. end and closes the door. Oh, wow. it, it it felt yeah. So I mean, it felt like it, yeah, it just felt like the death of the body. And the voice and the soul was just kind of still lingering there. It was yeah. it was a beautiful, beautiful video, beautifully shot. Whoever shot that video, um, wow, yeah. you know, it, 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 that must have been heavyweight. Have you seen the video to Black Star? Not yet. That's really that's that. It Intense. starts with um, a, a spaceman dead, right? It's clearly him. You know, you, yeah. You can because I watched it months ago because it was released, but it's about ten minutes long. And it's really dark. But it's 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 brilliant. It's so so great. And um... but young and old, he affected young and old. I mean, even the the youngsters these days, they they were gutted about this. They knew who he was. I'm yeah. like, wow, Tom at work. It's about time. He's twenty, and yeah. 
the whole day, it was like, we just, both me and him were just, oh. yeah. But we was on all day and yeah. we were just gutted, couldn't get over it. Radio 1 were in shock. Did you, was it the... Um, oh, Radio 2, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Radio 2. Radio 2 just turned into Bowie Day all day. Yeah, because uh, they, they, there was uh, some video that they shot up onto the... Uh, from the Because they have the webcams in their studio. Mm. Which we should we should do, but... Uh, no one would watch it. No one would watch it. <laughs> It'll be like... Uh, ooh. But um, the, the the looks on their faces when they just got the news and they had it had to give it confirmed and they were looking at each other saying that yeah this is this is real yeah like Jeremy Vine a released a documentary about him like uh, what like a day later or something because I know Jeremy Vine everyone's a big Bowie fan but Jeremy Vine's a huge Bowie fan well everything would stop you don't eat you do it yeah <laughs> well yeah make precisely it. Yeah. if if it if it means that much to you and it obviously it did. Mm. I mean, just looking at his face. I mean, it's, it's like Robin Williams. You just can't believe that he's gone. Exactly. Well, that but... was there was a thing with Bowie. He, he he was like an alien, and he was immortal. Yeah, he he was. was never going to go. He was always going to be around. And for him to just be suddenly taken away, and the way it happened. Yeah. You know, like he was, Duncan Jones, his son, just te- you know, just tweeting saying it's true. It's sad news. We just want to want to be left alone for a yeah, bit. Yeah. I'll be gone quiet for a bit. Whatever it was, he actually said. So, but it seemed so planned as well. It's everything seemed to be so neat and and w- controlled in his control. Like you said, his art, his everything that he did for his music, for his film, um, was on his terms. Yeah, but even so his was death, even his death. Even though it was cancer, he yeah. looked at cancer and says, "Well, you know, you you might have me in the grips." Of the illness, but I'm I'm choosing what I do with it. Yeah, you know I'm not going to let you uh, ruin um, my last moments. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out flying, and he really has. Yeah, um, and yeah. I don't think there's any other artist really on the planet that's had so much of an input. Yeah, you know, an influence on popular culture as Bowie has. You know, you talk about like the fashion. He, yeah, you know, he changed fashion. What it, what you could wear, what you could be. Boy wow. George would not be Boy George if he was not. And Boy uh, George you know, openly says that. Yeah, and that's that's where we got it. Yeah, you know, and, and the influences are incredible. Yeah, I mean, I, and his music, apart yeah. from in the eighties, like there's a few bits in the eighties which he admitted it was just so easy for him to write hit music because it was so easy to write a hit song. Yeah, but that he just made he dished out a few cheesy albums, but all these stuff late sixties all the way through the seventies like Lodger and Heroes. Like he was, that's, Heroes is a perfect song. It's a perfect album. It but is. that song it's just so incredible. It's like one of the best love songs ever written. And that level of creativity and intelligence just never went. I think it's, it's, it goes with the era as well. In the 60s, everybody was pretty much serious about their music. Elton John, all these, all these, uh, well, yeah, all of but, his contemporaries. Yeah, but if you think through the 70s, very... we had the big disco. There was like yeah. a progressive rock scene, the disco scene. He did his own thing. Yeah, and the, the, the thing about disco, everybody wanted to bury it, bury it. And that's why punk came out. Yeah. Punk came out because they wanted to get rid of this, the disco trash that was obviously going into that kind of eurovision direction mm. they wanted to just bury it so they can keep music alive pure yeah and then the 80s it just became manufactured bands started to kind of merge so emerge sorry and uh yeah you can tell that these artists in the 80s were, were struggling to to kind of come come up with something that had integrity in art yeah and so they like, like you said bowie did a few cheesy albums, a few uh, cheesy things. Yeah. Even stuff like, like Let's Dance and China Girl are brilliant yeah. songs. I love, I love yeah, Let's Dance. They're great. Yeah. And uh, I've heard the worst cover for that in a store. Um, I used to work in a store and it had the worst cover for it. Really? Ever. Talk about bad covers. Um, he, Bowie did a version of God Only Knows. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's awful. Yeah, but you see, not every, not every song's for everybody. No, and, no. Not uh, especially that's... what he tried to do with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand But then that. he came out of that, then he did like a, an album called Outside, which is so dark. And mm. really, um, you can tell Eno's back on it. You can tell, you know, actually, I think Visconti did that, I think. But, you know, he's he had collaborations with Eno and Visconti and stuff. But, yeah, it just always stayed relevant and incredible and... It's a, Really, really, really shocking thing yeah. to miss him. And it's been about three weeks now. Yeah. Uh, but it still feels... I'm still listening to him on the way here in the car. Yeah. I mean, there's some fascinating facts. Uh, I'll just, just read a couple now before we get on to his films. Um, uh, just one second. 
didn't have this prepared totally at all. But uh, for the one thing, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no supermarket music. Supermarket music, remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah remember that? <laughs> do 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 do. Yeah, that's right. Um, but one of the things was is that some um, help on aisle three, please. <laughs> Um, the, the the one thing that everybody mo- uh, mentions is is his eyes, and uh, there is a misconception that one eye is a different color to the other, which is rubbish. Wasn't it a fight or something? In, in, as, as a kid, in sc- I think in school, yeah. there was a fight With where a one of his eyes got uh, the pupil got uh, inflated, or or I'm not sure if it went, if it shrunk or got bigger. But mm. one of the eyes is, has a fixed pupil, yeah, dilated pupil. Um, but people uh, uh, kind of see that as being the dark eye and his other eye being the light one, where he actually had two light eyes before that. Right. So they're, they're not a different color. That's just purely a, a thing that actually happened. Um, but it oh. did add to his mystique, didn't it? You know? It was perfect. And yeah. there's a there's a picture in the Daily Mail that just came out, and um, my friend Lee sent the... Um, he's the super fan of David Bowie. sent a picture of... Uh, the, apparently, Bowie had a dog that also had um, one eye different. And the other, right? Which is a common occurrence in animals. I mean, the glove did, did he it, punch the dog in the face just so it's so it suited him? That's kind of what I was wondering, and I thought, no, this this is obviously a glaucoma case. Um, well, but um, to, for him to actually have, I mean, I don't. I, the thing is, it's the Daily Mail thing that came through. I, I I always kind of take these things with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, the, the 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 biggest thing that uh, Lee. Lee Tuplin actually told me was was this one about uh, you know Mark Chapman who killed Lennon yeah well allegedly now I'm I'm not too sure how 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 we got this information but uh, the police investigated his apartment Mark Chapman after he killed Lennon and all over the walls were pictures of both John Lennon and David Bowie yeah uh, the previous week uh, to the shooting um, of John Lennon Mark Chapman had been watching Bowie playing um, the Elephant Man at Broadway yeah Broadway. I'd heard about that yeah. And um, and apparently he'd written down in the journal that um, in order to decide who he was going to kill, he tossed a coin. And it was either heads John Lennon B or oh, no, <laughs> option B is never an option when you're tossing a coin. It's like heads John Lennon, tails David Bowie. Right. Apparently he decided to shoot John Lennon at a flip of a coin. The other side would have been David Bowie. Now that that see that that is frightening. That's a frightening thing to, to, for any any life to be decided on a coin, but uh, whether that's true or not, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 that was probably the. the I heard that thing. once Mark Chapman shot Lennon, he just sat down and was playing with some cards. Mm-hmm. Is that true? I have no idea. I, 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 because he was arrested. He, he was, was arrested. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I mean, he was anything. like he shot him and then was calm about it. Yeah, well, he was calm about it before when he got his autograph as well. Well, brainwashed by the CIA, just saying. Yeah, who knows? Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, Lennon was singing about, you know, love each other, come together, be one, yes. and we can't. He did. It's like John F. Kennedy. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. why he was shot. So, anyway, let's not go down the conspiracy No, no, route. no. Do you know what? It, that, that's okay. I mean... Well, the facts have you got there? Uh, the, apparently, this is a novel alleged, his ex-wife, Angie... Claims that she walked into a bedroom and caught him and Mick Jagger having sex. Yeah, yeah, apparently, and Mark Bolan at one point. But that's, you know, you know, when you're actually, it's like, uh, you know, Hollywood always sleeping with each other, and it's just, you know. I, I'm a straight man. I would have had sex with Bowie. I don't think he was gay. I think he was just a beautiful man. I probably would have I've, gone for it, it. Do you know what? Yes, yeah, sex and Mark is Bolan. just, just not, an not Jagger, though. Yeah. Don't don't fancy Jagger. Yeah, Jagger. I, I, that's, that's probably what the problem is with this. It's like, why Jagger? <laughs> why, yeah. Why not? You were good friends, though, weren't they? So. Well, yeah, why not? I mean, it's just one of those things, you know. I, and, um, yeah. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, oh, yeah, his ashes have been scattered um, secretly in Bali. That was... Uh, yeah, know. he's had no funeral. No funeral, no. Yeah, he didn't want a funeral. And he also had a, a seat uh, reserved for the fir- fl- first flight into space. And I kind of thought that, uh, like James Doohan, his um, ashes would be um, sent off into space. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But scattered in Bali. Scattered in Bali. Well, that's that's obviously his uh, place that um, meant more to him. I think it means more to us as a fan uh, that it would have been space. But mm. um, for him, it was Bali, and that's that's perfect, that's perfect for him. 
Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I can't argue. I've, I've literally have no say in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, I want to write a letter to Bowie's <laughs> estate. Yeah, it go, should have been sent to space, not barley. What are you thinking? <laughs> Get that Henry vacuum cleaner. Yeah, so I can all back up and put it into where it should be. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, uh, what a what an amazing legacy. Yeah, we will talk about what films because obviously he was an actor. He was, and I, he was a decent. He was a decent actor, yeah. and everybody's always it's so annoyed by that. Yeah, like, it's good like, at everything. Come on, he can do everything. Why not? I mean, the man who fell to earth, uh, Nicholas Rogue film. Are you the the first? The first one, visitor. I've always been visited. Nothing you have seen or heard about David Bowie will prepare you for the impact of his first dramatic performance. In the man who fell to earth. This is another dimension of David Bowie, one of the few true originals of our time. You're really a freak. I don't mean that unkindly. I like freaks. Is this a weapon? A weapon? Well, it's too small for interplanetary travel. So you assume that it's a weapon. If I stay here. I shall die. So there was just Bowie, and every time he's on the screen, nothing else mattered. Yeah, it's a perfect, perfect role for him, really. The alien, yeah, who came down, loving the alien, yeah, and the the, the multiple TVs that he was watching and the, the the reactions, his reactions to all of that was perfect. Yeah, love that film, and uh, of course, Rip Torn notching it up with uh, with all those women. Yeah, where's yeah. that? It's, uh, so, you, you recently watched Man Who Felt Worth. I've not seen it for a while, to be honest with you. No? I wanted to watch it after he'd yeah, after he gone, but I've not had a chance. It's, uh, it's on Prime at the moment on Amazon, so yeah. it's definitely available um, to watch. But it was it's a, it's a typical Nicholas Rogue shot film as well. It's always fractured, mm. um, fractured narrative. If, uh, if you think correctly, I think it was during the period of his thin white duke period. He was very thin in this. Yeah, I mean, that was he was doing a lot of drugs. Well, the 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 main actress, I think it was a line that was either inserted. You, know, you, you should eat more. Yeah. You you know you're skinny. Yeah. You should really eat more and stop drinking water. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, ne- he was never really a drinker. No, um, but no. he did a lot of drugs, <laughs> and I think there was a part where he'd just do coke for days and not sleep, and then he'd sleep for like three days straight yeah. and things like that. He wasn't... Yeah, but you can tell he was he was a wireframe in that film, yeah. definitely. Um, and then, of course, after Man Who Fell to Earth, he Labyrinth. Uh, everybody cites Labyrinth. Everybody knows Labyrinth. If you don't know Labyrinth, I think Labyrinth was probably my first time of seeing Bowie as a child. Yeah, they put labyrinth on him like what? what they put him on the map. That man looked like a girl, mum. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, he was uh, fascinating in that movie. Yeah. It was just it, you. You just kind of like, what is he gonna do? Yeah. Who is this creature? And yeah. it wasn't. And, and that's that's how. That's why he, he he was chosen to do it. Sarah, beware! I have been generous up until now, but I can be cruel. Generous. What have you done that's generous? Everything. Everything that you wanted, I have done. You asked that the child be taken. I took him. You cowered before me. I was frightening. I have reordered time. I have turned the world upside down. And I have done it all for you. I am exhausted from living up to your expectations. Isn't that generous? Um, I don't think anybody else. I mean, imagine being made by anybody else and having Bowie not in it. Yeah, it would have been weird. It would have. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just can't imagine. I can't I even like, think. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dance. hey, you dance magic. Hey, if you want the baby, you better come to me. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> not Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, you want a baby. I did it all for you, Sarah. I'm a friend of Sarah. I was told that she was here. <laughs> I'm going to take a brother. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, and he wrote all the music to it, obviously. Yeah. And the music's just so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it really does set apart 
um i mean i always think of labyrinth um it's it's a, a movie that i always join up with dark crystal yeah yeah and um those two you, you watch one you watch the other yeah they're okay. both uh, jim henson's uh, puppets in there yeah and they're both quite dark yeah absolutely. and it was yeah. it was that era of disney and as well that where they, they had the, the black cauldron i think it was that the 70s i'm not sure but there was an era of disney where they were kind of weren't as fluffy and, and bubblegummy as they mm. are now and um and the muppets were dark they wanted to explore the darkness and the fraud the fraud book was obviously a, an influence for the dark crystal but with labyrinth yeah. that just it's just creepy as hell it was great but it was done so lightly but the whole thing when she's actually in the um when uh, Je- jennifer Connolly's inside the dump and she's in her old room again and it all yeah. seems normal and then it just falls down about around her I mean, I've, I've had that dream yeah hundreds yeah. of times and it's, it's a good little um where you don't no. think just take all this stuff use this stuff don't think just have this stuff yeah yeah very like, very subliminal it's all yeah. about yeah it's, well, it's, it's basically about what society says don't worry about everything just 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 you don't, know, don't you, worry about it just buy good. stuff this you just need the stuff you don't need to worry about things <laughs> well back down the rabbit hole right down there we love it we love it it's where we would belong so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely um, but and, like, how funny it is as well the bog of eternal stench it's oh yeah so I mean, a ludo is hilarious but no, man. for a person who i i can't stand oh there's a bit of pop there sorry about that um as a, a person who doesn't like fart jokes oh right i didn't care that the bug of eternal stench was literally just a stream of fart jokes it was that was just never ending i like a fart joke i'll be honest with you i i mean river watched it the other day and when they run over the steps <laughs> a, I just, we both had a good old laugh it's perfect for that that that's it but anywhere else you know direct fart jokes people farting is just yeah, I just don't, it doesn't work. I like, like it when rocks fart and bogs. That's it. Just That's it. You like Yeah, great. I like inanimates. You like <laughs> rocks that give off methane. <laughs> it's a very niche market for you, Steve. <laughs> I think we just have a sound bite. I like rocks. <laughs> they make me happy. Yeah, make a meme out of it. So what were the films? Obviously um, it was in Twin Peaks Firewalk with me. Yeah, twin, yeah, that was one of his uh, he, little cameo. You he, can tell he he was suited for that. Um, yeah, that area arena. He, he, I'm surprised he wasn't actually in in the series itself. Yeah, and for the it's either the beginning or the end is, um, mm-hmm. of Lost Highway. It's a Bowie song, mm. a great Bowie song. I think it's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. When I, you I, just see the road, don't you, coming through, and you yeah, that. Okay, love that. Is now, oh, I love that. Song. Is it? Oh right, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets travel on. I start to believe if I were to bleed. Pink sky, the man changes his plan is built by the cruise beyond. I know, obviously, you played Nicholas Tesla in The Prestige. I have not seen that. Oh, well, you should see that film. I, I think he's um, great in that. He's yeah. really good in that film. Is that a recent one? The Prestige. Probably about six years ago. I want to say maybe a little bit. He wasn't doing music at that point, and he just popped up in the Prestige, and he was in Zoolander. A little cameo in Zoolander. Everyone was in Zoolander. <laughs> yeah, and everyone's in Zoolander too. I think I was in Zoolander. Was you? Yeah, I don't know how, but I was. I'm, I'm there. I played the bullet. Oh yeah, yeah. That was going towards the. I played the nap. The, the president of Malaysia's <laughs> face. Yeah, oh, brilliant, mate. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he, he put himself in I the right into, place. I got into method acting for that part. I used yeah. to climb in trees and just throw myself at birds. <laughs> it's not funny. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> this is going unedited, man. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, as for a film career, he didn't he didn't appear in a lot of movies. No, he just did what he wanted. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do this. That's his sort did of it, mantra, isn't it? But did he do anything else um, outside of music, outside of uh, influencing fashion, but directly music and film? Was, was there anything else that he... Well, obviously you mentioned he played the elephant man on stage. Uh, oh, yeah, did Broadway, yes. Yeah, so he yeah. did that. Um, he, towards the end of his life, he was rushing to finish Lazarus. That is a 
a stage show that he's put on. Yeah, and apparently, well, the, they're hoping to have that over here as well. But, yeah, um, the tickets went crazy for that yeah, when he died. I think they should, because um, if, if they don't bring it over to Britain, then I think they're doing a huge disservice to yeah, uh, yeah. to the British public to miss out, missing out on that. But he obviously, when, well, he was really ill he was recording he was trying to film that and then he's going right over to the other side of new york yeah. to make sure he finished the play all while battling cancer Fucking great tremendous guy. yeah and um, did his son direct any of his stuff did it direct him at all did he actually i don't, th- get... I don't think so because i kind of wondered because they're very he, he has a very separate career they sometimes you get that kind of bleed over with you know like oh he'll do a music video just to just to kind of help his dad out or do something but help uh, his dad out yeah. I don't think his dad needed any help <laughs> but just, just just to kind of say oh, come on uh, go come on, on, come on dad you're not relevant anymore let me <laughs> let me uh, do what you can't imagine that imagine David Bowie not being relevant what you'd be doing <laughs> it's just it would have been ridiculous because obviously he had a heart attack on stage didn't he. That How was, long ago was that? I, uh, ten years ago, maybe something like yeah, that. And yeah. um, so he sort of disappeared from public life. He did the odd like showing up here and there, but he didn't really do anything. And yeah. then out of the blue, he came out with the next day this album. That was like, what the hell? Bowie's back. Never told anyone who was recording it. He's the only person who could do that in secret. Yeah, and releases the album the next day. Rel- obviously, he was relevant again. All the newspapers were talking about him. Yeah. And then he got this idea that there might be another album coming out. And then this other album comes out. Then he dies. <laughs> and that's it. He's just obviously got told he's been battling for 18 months. Right, I need to finish all these things off. Yeah. And I th- I, he might have had things. I mean, like the, the Stanley Kubrick myths and all that. There they are things that he, he probably still has um, that he wanted to do. Yeah, they probably apparently some... he had another album in the works that he wanted to finish. We never got to finish. I think there's demos that might, might bootleg like them. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, but and and meanwhile, yeah, everybody's just just getting to grips with this. Yeah, and um, but it was weird. It was it sounds melodramatic, but for the next week, mm-hmm. everything felt different. Yeah, you're right. It was like it a was like Rob, member, like Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah, and I was sort of in a bit of a haze for a week because you just yeah. don't expect it. Like I said, he had this immortal thing, and then he's just gone. Yeah, and yeah. it's like pff, he'll never. Even though he's quiet for the past ten years, yeah. there was always the idea that oh, another Bowie album might come out. You might appear in a film. You might do this. You might do that. And then to just know that that's it, it's gone. You'll never, you'll never hear anything. It's funny. Everybody is different. Every, every, every death. Um, recent deaths, especially. I mean, we've had Len- Leonard Nimoy, we've had uh, uh, Wes Craven, um, uh, Robin Williams. I think I just said that twice. <laughs> no, no, I said Leonard Nimoy, uh, Wes, Wes Craven, Craven, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Uh, we've Robin had Williams. Alan, Alan Rickman, <laughs> Robin Williams. <laughs> and But Robin Williams has been the one that I've, I've not been able to adjust to. Yeah. Yeah, and Robin Williams just seem, didn't seem to stop. Yeah, because again, he was just false in nature. He was just immortal. Yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman as well. I mean, that he is also a person who died by by his own tragedy. And um, it, it's 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 those careers that you kind of feel like, well, they had so much to do. Mm. They had so much to do. But, but with Bowie, I don't. I kind of think, well, you know, he 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 finished it. He closed the chapter. He'd done so much, yeah. Yeah, and it, it still still feels as though that uh, you know the wheel, the world just feels odd. Mm. It feels off keel slightly. Yeah, and uh, there's nobody out there who kind of represents that um, that image. Brownstone building, and three flights of stairs. Well, I had a I had a way of uh, working through musical problems by painting them out at one time, and uh, that seems to have disappeared over the over the years. But uh, you've lost that ability. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For one reason or another, it's, that seems to have changed now. Tell me the satisfaction of completing a painting that you that where you're on that you like a lot. That, for me, it, yeah, the satisfaction of that. It, for me, to be quite frank, it's finishing it so I can get on to something else. I mean, it's it, just it's getting weird. through it's it. Not, it's getting through it. It's the process. Um, there's something in it that it just turns, it just turns me to jelly. Turn, my heart and my mind just, just become, I can't explain it. It's a very strange feeling. It's not particularly pleasant either. I can't really say that I enjoy I can't really say that I enjoy music or painting in quite that 
I mean, it's not like sex or something which you can kind of really enjoy. There's <laughs> I knew something you'd get back really. To the sex. <laughs> that's, it's important, it's, <laughs> but there's something. Um, there's something volatile, emotive, and um, something that makes me really quite angry about going through the process of both making music and, and doing visual arts. And, but uh, visuals are. But you know, I guess that's my problem. No, but let's deal with your problem. <laughs> <laughs> you but came if, to but see. But if you deal with my problem, I might not be able to do these things again. You see, I don't, oh. I, I'm wary of uh, analysis. Yes, sir. But let me point out to you, <laughs> yeah. knowing your history and knowing your family yes. and knowing your background, you have always, always resisted any notion that this creativity that you have comes from any sort of dysfunctional or you know madness he, I, out of it's family. I think I've often wondered if if actually the being an artist of in any way any nature is a, a, a kind of a sign of a certain kind of dysfunction a social dysfunctionalism anyway it's an extraordinary thing to want to do to express yourself in such in such rarefied terms uh, uh, I think there's a, a. I think it's a loony kind of thing to want to do. I think the the saner and rational approach to life is to survive steadfastly and create a protective home and and and, and, and create a warm, loving environment for one's family and, and get food for them. That's about it. That's actually all. anything else is extra. All culture is extra. Culture is, uh, you know, that's. Uh, I guess it's a freebie. It's something that we we don't we only need to eat. We don't need uh, particular color plates or particular height chairs or anything. I mean, anything will do. But we insist on making one thousand different kinds of chairs and fifteen different kinds of plates. It's it's unnecessary and it's a sign of the irrational part of man. I think we should just be content with picking nuts, not <laughs> mine. I might add. Nobody stops you. Nobody cares. So, um, yeah. Yeah, like you say, you just mentioned Alan Rickman. Yeah, we should another be there, one. Little... That was a shock as well. Yeah, because just, I was it, just was, it was like... The day after. Yeah, it was like, oh, God. You really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? That's it. Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. And call off Christmas. That was an actual once. Damn it, now look at me. Look at me! I can't go out there and I won't say that stupid line one more time. Asia donde tu duemes. My feet will want to march to where you are sleeping. Your accent's terrible. You dare use my own spells against me, possibly? Yes. I'm the half-blood prince. Okay, well, when I think Al Rittman, I think Hans Gruber. You do? I do. Apparently it was his first role. It may yeah. not be true, but I think I, I think I heard that somewhere. That was his first role. And he's the best part of that film. I wanted this to be professional. Efficient, adult, cooperative. Not a lot to ask. Alas, your Mr. Takagi did not see it that way, so he won't be joining us for the rest of his life. We can go anywhere you want us. You can walk out of here or be carried out. But have no illusions. We are in charge. So, decide now, each of you. And please remember, we have left nothing to chance. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, I mean, he, he's theatre and film, and he is the best part of that die, die hard. You can tell he came with a theatrical edge. Yeah. Everybody else were, were just film. Yeah, and apparently everyone was like, what's he doing? Yeah. And it just worked. Obviously, well, obviously it worked. Straight Probably away. one of the best action films ever made, you know. But... No, I have a machine gun.
Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. ho. It was that voice. I mean, apparently scientists have cited that his voice has a, a combination of elements that that, that make for a perfect um, voice. Really? Yeah, that he has two of, th- two of the three th- uh, key things that you need to have a perfect voice. I don't know who that person is who has the third. And um, But yeah, he, he was unique in, in, with his voice. Uh, like with Bowie, Bowie was unique with his vision, uh, with the vision of who he was. Alan Rickman, it was about the sound yeah. of his voice and uh, the delivery of his um, deadpan. He was very. He, he seemed like a very serious... He played a lot of serious roles, yeah. let's just say. But in, in real life, he was actually... A fun person to yeah. To apparently, it wasn't Hans Gruber. It was the sheriff in Nottingham. That's where everyone was like, "What's he doing?" Oh, but you mean they just the, went with it. The yeah. Prince of Thieves thing. Prince yeah, of Thieves, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah, yeah. That was um, yeah. That was actually a really interesting film, though. I, 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 he made that as well. Of course, he did. Yeah, he nailed it. Was best, it. it was the best part of that. Best part of that too. Alan, from Die Hard to January Man, Quickly Down Under, The Benefactors, and now Robin Hood, in which you are the notorious Sheriff of Nottingham, one wants to look at you and say to the actor, why are you so good at being so bad? I don't know. (laughs) Um, Thank you for saying I am. Um... I'm going to cut your heart out with a spoon! Why a spoon, cousin? Why not a... Because it's dull, you twit. It'll hurt more. He was a frightening son of a bitch in that movie, and he was in Die Hard. To be fair, I mean, it was a. Uh, oh, was. It was, yeah. was. It's not. You don't go come across. I mean, like in Harry Potter, you know, he he played serious, really, really thickly. Yeah, he did. Yeah, thick seriousness and danger and you you but still you know that feeling that you have when there's an actor in a film and you feel, feel safe. safe yeah definitely you, you feel safe written. even though he's supposed to be playing the antithesis of yeah. that emotion like when he was at like love actually i don't really like that film but that part was the best part of it he was the best part of that film yeah you're right absolutely right because it, it, it had it, it wasn't as fluffy as the other storylines it was about him Flirting and and having uh, starting an affair with another yeah, woman. Yeah, he never did have the affair. He though, never did, did but yeah. he and Emma Thompson were incredible in that movie. Yeah. Tell me, if you were in my position, what would you do? What position is that? Imagine your husband bought a gold necklace and come Christmas gave it to somebody else. Oh, God. Would you wait around to find Good out night. a bit? No, 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 no. Don't have Christmas. Would you wait around to find out if it's just a necklace or if it's sex and a necklace or if, worst of all, it's a necklace and love? Would you stay, knowing life would always be a little bit worse? Or would you cut and run? God. I am so in the wrong. A classic fool. Yes, but you... You've also made a fool out of me. You've made the life I lead foolish too. And like I say, that film should have been like five different movies and just focus on each story. And I would have really t- paid attention to that one. Yeah. It would have been a good good story as, as a single film. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it had been a, a, a Michael Bay film, he would have had the affair. He would have had the affair. Uh, yeah, it would have been full There, there would have sex. been twerking. Yeah, lots of twerking. <laughs> At work. Cause yeah, pro- a- I, he wouldn't have cast Alan Rickman. It would have been Will Smith. <laughs> Who has the affair. <laughs> I can't With believe- Emma Thompson. <laughs> I can't believe you introduced the Bayhem reference. I had to get there. Ah, yeah. yeah it says. But um, what else has Alan Rickman done? Oh, he was in The January Man, which was, of course, with Mary Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth Master and Tony. Have you seen The January Man? I've, no, I've not seen that. It's a, it's, a trend, it's a tremendous film. It's a film with um, Kevin Klein. Oh, not to be confused with the underwear, but Kevin Klein. With, with, with a, another actor I feel safe with, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I tell you what, he, he, these two in this movie were hilarious. Yeah. They, they worked well. In the, and it's a film, it's a film about them. They're stalking a, a, a serial killer in New York. and they have Sounds him. hilarious. It, it's It's hilarious. They're, they're they're all kind of like just they're not really official. They're, they're just they just like the idea of looking for a serial killer in New York, as far as I remember. We should review it. We should definitely review it. Um, okay. But um, Alan Rickman plays a uh, he plays a painter who, um, uh, if I remember rightly, he likes to paint nudes. Okay. In a very perverse way. 
I, I'm going to watch it now. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, uh, Truly Madly Deeply. Now, this is one of my favourite roles for, for him. Right. Uh, apart from the fact that he does, that actually does look like Kevin Klein in this picture. <laughs> um, but this film, this film was a- absolutely astonishing. Um, it was a film about a, um, he was the husband who died. Right. Um, and she was a widower left, left in the house where she was supposed to be spending the rest of her, her life with him. And um, he comes back as a ghost. And okay. he's trying to encourage her to let go of him. And to move on with his with her life, and it's it's a tr- it's a really really good drama. I really love you. I really truly love you. Yeah. I really truly madly love you. I really truly madly deeply love you. Yeah. I really truly madly deeply passionately love you. I really truly madly deeply passionately remarkably love you. I really truly madly deeply passionately remarkably. Deliciously love you. I really truly. Madly, passionately, remarkably, deliciously, juicily. Deeply. <laughs> deeply! You passed on deeply, which was your word, which means that you couldn't have meant it. So you're a fraud, actually. <laughs> you're probably a figment of my imagination. Juicily. <laughs> your forfeit. Um, um, you play, I dance. They're just telling each other that they just love each other so much that they just can't let go, and this is their moment. And it was a, it's a very strong film, uh, and um, cool. you know it's got a big heart. Definitely a winner in my book, uh, worth right. watching. Um, and uh, yeah, Alan Rickman, these two just just stole the whole both, both roles were, were brilliant in it. Right. And he's basically he's got ghost friends who he brings around, and they're drinking late at night. You know, ghost drinking. I don't know how that works, but. Um, <laughs> You've got to let your hair down, haven't you? Even in the afterlife. True. Yeah. True. Okay, so um, so with Alan Rickman, you know, it was a shock. Again, cancer. didn't know he was ill. No, he didn't just, know he was he ill. Reported that he's... And it's, it does seem as though that every, every so often, cancer just keeps on coming back. I mean, the Terry Wogan was taken from us as yeah. well. Uh, the Welsh voice of um, of uh, Eurovision and um, well, multiple things before that. He was the Johnny Carson of our of our Again, era. no one knew. Nobody knew. It just happened. That cancer's a tenacious little bugger, isn't it? It really has been the the bane of of January. Yeah. It's, um, and and it seems to be the thing. Every time we hear somebody has passed away, we we don't even have to look at the cause of death. It's just gonna be that. It's weird when like you hear someone's died and then it's of something different. You're like, oh, a bit, a bit yeah. relieved there. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, there we go. It's um, we're, we're we're starting back on episode forty-seven. Yeah, with a with a a very a tribute with a spring to spring uh, in our step. <laughs> talking uh, about death, death. But um, well, yeah. if we end on a a slightly happier note, since I talk about the Oscar nominations, let's do it. Let's go. It. Are you ready? Hollywood Hotel. Good evening. Just a moment, I'll connect you. 
So if you remember last year, we did the uh, the Oscars. Um, we did the nominations as a two-parter, and we ended up in Israel. Yeah, um, we did. In, yeah. It, we on in, the Gaza Strip, weren't we? Yeah, we were in Milo Kunis, yeah, if you remember. We were. Yeah. <laughs> I remembered. That was great. Um, but um, we're going to look at the Oscar nominations now for Best Picture, and it's quite a, you know, it's quite a strong group. Yeah, so we've got for Best Picture would be The Big Shot, Bridge of Spies, Brooklyn, Mad Max, Fury Road, The Martian, The Revenant, Room, and Spotlight. Yeah, out of all these films, how many of you watched already? Um, I've seen three. I've, I'm terrible. I've only seen two, but I've only got a one-year-old baby, so uh, yeah, I've seen the, the typical uh, The Martian and Mad Max. Yeah, but I'm curious about Brooklyn. You said it was quite amazing. She, the film is not incredibly exciting, but the the actual character. You know, like with the Oscars, they seem to pick films that have a moment in them where um, they can show us a clip. Yeah. Do you yeah. get what I mean? So, like, with The Revenant, it's probably in Fighting the Bear or the opening shot. Um, with Mad Max, it could be anything, <laughs> any any moment of those action scenes, which are incredible. Yeah. With Brooklyn, it's never really, they don't have these big, massive scenes, but Sasha Ronan, I think, is probably one of, if not the, one of the best actresses working right now. That's good to know. And she's so I don't think the film would win. I'd like to see her maybe win. Yeah, because she she, a, she basically holds the film up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she's, that's, yeah. I don't think the Martian would win. It's it's kind of like Brooklyn. It's probably like that Kate Blanchett film when she when she was going nuts. Was it last year when she was in a, in a film and she was nominated for Blue Valentine? Blue Valentine. That's yeah. the one. Well, it was a uh, who? Woody Harrelson. Har- Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Film. Woody Allen film. And um, it's probably like that where you know, the, the actual film itself is probably not that in, not as as strong as the actual portrayal of this character. So it's a real character piece. Yeah, like I said, the film is good. It's just not... It doesn't have this, the clip scene that you, that you play at the Oscars. Like, there will be with the big shot with Spotlight. It's when uh, Mark Ruffalo loses his cool and has this massive speech that everyone's talking about and keeps highlighting as part of that film, you know. <laughs> so that's what they'll show for that. Room um, possibly could win. Not seeing it, but... I don't... I'm not too sure. I think it's going to be one of the dark horses that people will put... It will pick, pick up momentum beforehand, but it will just kind of be... Yeah, it's a... It's a people have seen that film and say, it's ultimately, a, it's a, a human enlightening experience. It's yeah. It's the message of love and the power but it, between... But it flips... It subverts the whole idea of, of being brought up in a captive... In, in, you know, in yeah. captivity and makes it different puts a different spin on it which is good yeah it's i'm not sure time. if the revenant would win because the guy who did birdman last year birdman did birdman win best picture last year i can't remember that's a really good question because i same director isn't it yeah i well last year gosh i can't remember who won best picture i knew that it was the director won it i think it was birdman was it best picture yeah right had to be so what's your money on Oh, I think. Well, I, I think the Bridge of Spies is too much of a. Yeah, I don't uh, think that's gonna. That's too much of a hunt for Red October kind of feel about it. Uh, the Revenant. From, from what I've heard about Bridge of Spies, it's just like uh, a film made by masters of the game. Yeah, that's that's people just say that you know. Mad Max is it's a Mad Max is a shoe in because it is an extraordinary film, but it's not going to be one of those things that the Academy voters will just jump on and i can't say, imagine that it's an amazing it was a great film but there's so much more gravity in other films um that, that are based in reality but they, they like reality in hollywood yeah. um and so it's it's a toss-up between the big short and the spotlight i think you reckon yeah i i don't think a big film like revenant will get it even though it, it does have that brave heart aspect of it that might appeal to the Academy voters, but mm. um, and of course Leonardo DiCaprio. Apparently, it's his year. I've, to win yeah, he's going to win. He's going to win. Well, they need to because I, I think it's about time, isn't it? Yeah, he's 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 a good actor. I, I think he's a good person. I don't I don't I don't have anything bad to say about Leo. Mm. Um, poor Matt Damon and the Martian. It's a good film. It's a very clever. It's a very well thought out film, and it's got a good sense of humor. If they'd have put um, uh, the other side of Matt Damon in it, what was his name? Who's playing Batman? 
Are you all right, buddy? Um, Christian Bale. Um, ben Affleck. Oh, Ben Affleck. If it had been a Ben Affleck movie, it would have been terrible. Yeah. I think anything that Matt Damon does, I always automatically assume it would be awful with Ben Affleck in the role. I don't know why. I just do that. Um, what did um, uh, Ricky Gervais say about uh, say about him that he's the only person Ben Affleck's been loyal to or hasn't cheated on is Matt Damon? <laughs> Um, um, actor in a leading role, I think it's going to go to Leo. Yeah, I think Leo. I mean, even though Brian Cranston, I haven't seen Trumbo. I want to see Trumbo, um, but um, yeah, I it, don't think Eddie Redmayne will win it two years in a row. No, no, I think it's going to be Leo. That's the foregone conclusion. I think we're definitely looking at um, Miss, Miss in Roman. A leading role. <laughs> We've got Carol, Kate Blanchett, and Carol. She, yeah, she's really good in that. Brie Larson in Room. I don't think Jennifer Lawrence is going to win it this time, is she? No, she's going to fall over, though. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like Sasha Ronan to win for Brooklyn, because I think she's incredible. Yeah, I think so. Um, even though, I, again, I haven't seen the film, but um, there's, there's, there's just too much being said about her role. And uh, it, it's, it, yeah, it feels like a foregone conclusion. It seems very clear cut yeah. this year. Uh, I think last year it was a little bit more obscure. Um, supporting roles... Well, Tom Hardy has the distinction of being in, a, in two movies, um, but uh, wasn't nominated for being Max, which is not a surprise. But for Tom Hardy in The Revenant, I've, I've heard that he is a chameleon. Yeah. He's a literally... Uh, Choose the scenery, I think. Really so. does. Yeah. And, but I think he does it in a good way. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's there, but I'm actually... He won the Golden Globe, didn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm surprised that... Um, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan wasn't nominated as... as a, a shock. It's a great film, by the way. Have you seen it? I've not. No. It's yeah. It's it didn't feel like Rocky Balboa. It just felt yeah because I I he felt like he was totally not Rocky because he's not boxing in this. It's, yeah. It's, you know, he's it's, it's taking on a, a different part of himself. So, uh, but I think that it, it was it was nice to see Sylvester Sylvester Stallone doing being the coach. Yeah. That was great. Instead of being the the one who gets smashed up but is it an oscar worthy performance but was it back in the day was it did he no, get the, did he not. get the oscar for rocky the first time around yeah i think he did i yeah. think he did um i just think that people love sylvester stallone in that role and i think he he represents a very uh, i think it's what he represents more yeah. than what he actually uh, it's pretty much all he yeah. can do isn't it it is <laughs> it is i'd like to see ruffalo win mark ruffalo i think he's a, maybe that's the way it will go maybe he's a fine actor it, it's, it's it's always a surprise to see sylvester stallone it's like yeah him, yeah to see arnold schwarzenegger in there will be <laughs> it's like i really made it this time what um, about actress supporting actress Jennifer Jason Lee shouldn't be there. Rooney Mara was good. Rachel yeah. McAdams is always great. And uh, Alicia Velkander. Yeah. Danish girl. You see, I, I don't know any of these roles. So I, and uh, Hateful Kate... Eight, I thought, is probably his worst film. Everyone seems to really like it, but I just could not get on with it. They're all of it. There's a part in the stage called The Beginning, which is great. Really yeah. good. It's got yeah. the Quentin dialogue, but once they make it to the cabin, it's just... And it's kind of like the thing, really, you know, this isolation thing going on. But I just wasn't in. I think impressed. it's it, it, it's too it's too aware of itself. It's too meta. I think I think because it's everybody's watching. You're not immersed in the characters because you're immersed in the Tarantino um, aspect of it yeah, all well, and the just, spotlights. Yeah, it it it, it doesn't feel like a real. You know, they don't always feel like they're real films that you can immerse yourself into in a Tarantino film as much as no. they used to be. Well, Maybe not, but I just they, yeah. I, I think it's for me the worst film he's done. Yeah, no, what well, four rooms? I don't mind that. I thought it was all right. His yeah. little part in it. Yeah, it's just um, yeah. And he only did like a quarter of that film, so you can only blame him. True, for a quarter. true. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's me. I, yeah, just couldn't get on with that film at all. Next, <laughs> next. Oh, animated feature film, right? Okay. Although all this of them something, are great. There's something that we talk about that we know Inside about. Inside Out. Inside Out. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anomalisa apparently is incredible. I've not had a chance to watch that yet, but Inside Out is brilliant. It is yeah. so good. I'm annoyed it isn't nominated in the best picture category. Yeah, it's quite strange that you know because I, I I can never understand 
the difference because best animated feature and best feature you know wouldn't it be the same if it if it's the best animated feature then and and it won best picture wouldn't it, wouldn't it still be best animated yeah exactly because then why wouldn't any, uh, and it's, the, it's, the i don't know why they need to do that and they need to be an oscar for best voiceover artist they do yeah yeah they don't they don't have that yet they're very um out of the loop when it comes to that kind of work mm. um which is quite strange because i th- i think there are some notable uh, ever since Aladdin, really, yeah. that they could have intru- introduced something in there, at least an honorary voiceover uh, award. It doesn't matter yeah. if they have a nominations; it can just have this person did some really incredible work with us. Give Absolutely, them a, 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 and same. It's a, it's a talent all of its own, isn't and it? The same with games as well. Now, I think the games are so cinematic. Um, I think The Last of Us, especially, uh, should have been given awards. I think probably I think games do have their own awards. Uh, here and I there and everywhere, but, yeah, but, but nice nothing to, is big to be recognised as the academy. Now, nowadays, yeah. they are they are cinematic cinematic uh, feasts that you yeah. can really enjoy. I mean, I can just watch them on YouTube and not have to play these games anymore because yeah. um, they are that good. Um, so yeah, I, I'm and um, it was Mark Komodo who also had in his best uh, in his top five. I think it's his favourite film of the year. Some of the, some of these films, the majority of them were animated. Yeah him he's, he's really into the animation uh, so there we go um I, I don't know if we're going to go into cinematography i'm sure though i think mad max yeah it should win that that win should that. win that because th- there's so much beauty in that um costumes it, it, you know, it's always difficult i mean costumes are always difficult because you there's always a renaissance period film and there's always kind of like a a, a kind of a, a punk yeah ask esque film how do you decide which is better just I because don't... one uses makeup and the other per, uh, you know more majority of it is makeup and, and bits of plastic tubes yeah. and the other person uses materials in a very traditional way it's like mm. you know who do you reckon directing um uh, yeah let's go straight to directing it might I... go to the revenant He's, he's done more of his clever camera work stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. I think so. It's yeah, I think George Miller's the only true veteran there. I think mm. um, the other names are all just Adam McKay. Yeah, and and, and them. No, yeah, no Scorsese, no Spielberg, no Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw him in. No, yeah, there's Star- no Michael Bay. There's no Michael Bay. Good. Ah, Star Wars wasn't really nominated for anything, was it? Um, Would be best. Funny like... enough, Mad Max. Um, oh, editing the got, Force Awakens. There yeah, it is. the Force Awakens got about three nods for the technical, of course. Yeah, Mad Max got about nine nominations. I think it was the most nominated film this year. Mad Max Beyond. Um, Beyond Fury Road, <laughs> and I love that. I love that they've actually recognised a science fiction picture yeah. for being beautiful. For being a, it's a painting. It's a painting that moves at a furious rate of a yeah. thousand horsepower, and it's it's yeah, it's it's fascinating film. Definitely for the big screen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so there are the Oscars, yeah. and um, we're not going to be doing any sit-ins with uh, watching the Oscars this year. I think we're just going to watch them on our own turf. We might come back and do a, a "What we'll, did you think?" We'll probably talk of. about it, yeah. Because uh, of course, there's when are the Oscars? That is a really good question. Shall I have a look? If you, if you want. <laughs> Shall I just... And when are the Baftas? Oh, Baftas always come before, don't they? Yeah. Uh, Oscars are February February twenty eighth. Right. So we got. Uh, got a few weeks yeah yeah i reckon i reckon we can squeeze in uh the, the other two podcasts that we're hoping to to squeeze in yeah. um nervously the the, the <laughs> nervously we're, we're gonna try oh god yeah and uh it's green st- inferno sex in the city 2 green inferno sex in the city 2 and we're also gonna we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the force awakens um and maybe do a comparison with spice got spice <laughs> Okay. We we like our comparisons, but we, we you know ra- random comparisons. But yeah. uh, we do need to to get Spice World out of the way because I don't want that to follow us into this season. All right then, okay then. So, so but can you can you watch Spice World for me, Andy? Can you do it? I will. Yes, it's on YouTube. Good. There, there's no excuse. It watch it on YouTube, and, and yeah, we, we can do it. We can do it. I just worry that the part where. Uh, ginger spice kisses an alien might be a bit too much for me and i might have an accident 
just pretend that the alien is David Bowie and uh, we can come full circle here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So till next time. Yeah. Um, keep it dystopian, people. Yeah. Cool. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. I find that I'm a, a person who um, can um, take on the guises of, of different people that I meet. I can switch accents in, in seconds of meeting somebody and I can adopt their accent. I've always found that I collect. I'm a collector. Um, and I've always just seemed to collect personalities, um, ideas. I have a hodgepodge philosophy which really is very minimal. Um, very Do you believe in God, God for instance? What? Do you believe in God? I, am, I believe in an energy form, but I'm not, I, wouldn't, uh, put, I wouldn't like to put a name to it. Do you indulge in any form of worship? Um, uh, life. 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 You no. don't watch yourself in films, do you? Uh, not if I can help it. No, it doesn't thrill me. And you don't talk mm. much about the theory of acting, but there was one point where you were asked about it, and you said the camera likes you if it can see you thinking and, most importantly, listening, which is perhaps a strange thing for an actor to say because most people would think you were judged on what you said rather than... Yes, but you only speak as... Listen. a human being in life and therefore if you're trying to reproduce life on stage and whenever I've worked or talked to students or indeed worked with young actors when I was directing The Winter Guest as a movie particularly I have, I have a, a, an absolute mantra which is that you you only speak because you wish to respond to something you've heard so the notion of an actor going away and looking at a speech they have in their bedroom alone at night is a complete nonsense to me. Your, what you have to say is completely incidental. All one wants to see from an actor, to me, is the intensity and accuracy of their listening. And then what you have to say will become automatic. And then it will be free and alive. And then you can work on it and shape it and talk about it. But the basic kind of engine to it is how accurate is your listening and how alive are you to your fellow actors and, and uh, how accurate is your response and how bold. <laughs>